Hey everyone, welcome to Kill All Games in this somewhat different review episode. Recently I played the indie RPG Eve of Calamity by Clothscape, and I sort of didn't know what to really say. Um, usually with my reviews I like to script out things so that I'm not just rambling, but at times when you play a game, you're sort of almost uncertain about what to say. So I came up with this idea that I'm calling Raw Reviews. As the title suggests, it's a very raw, off-the-cuff kind of review style where I don't necessarily compose my thoughts, and while there will be some light editing in the video, me talking right now is not on a script. I'm kind of just winging it and hoping for the best. So with that said, I want to talk about a few key aspects of Eve of Calamity in here, namely its gameplay, its audio-visual presentation, and its price point, and then compare that against other RPGs that you could buy right now on Steam. Let's get into it. So I've said it a few times on this channel in various videos, but RPGs, and namely turn-based ones, are not the type of genre I typically play. Something about waiting doesn't really appeal to me, and while I understand that there's a strategic element that fans of the genre get into, I like more action-oriented games, where I press the button, an action happens, and I need to react. I'm... I don't know if that's because I played beat-em-ups when I was younger, it doesn't matter. Eva Calamity is a very, very old-school turn-based RPG. It's obviously not a JRPG since it's made by a Western developer, but you could say it takes inspiration from Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. It's definitely antiquated. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean bad per se, but for someone like me, I probably should have done more research before I agreed to take on a key. I was reached out to by indie developer Penti Kovumniemi. I really apologize if I butchered that name, but he saw my channel and thought this would be a good way to get the word out on his RPG. Now I don't know that this channel is necessarily big enough for that, but you know I like to help out the small guys. That's part of why I wanted to start Kill All Games. In mainstream games media it's hard to get any coverage of indie games period, but here I don't have any restrictions from my publishers telling me we gotta drive traffic or Google AdSense not pushing the review because no one knows about it. So, you know, this isn't my cup of tea, but I figured, let me give it a shot. So first off, if you're like me, you're not a fan of RPGs, Eva Calamity's not gonna do a whole lot for you. As I said, the gameplay's basic, but I mean that in the strictest sense of the word. When enemies pop up on the screen, there's not even animations for your characters. This is very much I mean, the first game that comes to mind is Mystic Quest, which had that exact style. You just saw the enemies there, and a slash would come, and they'd take damage. So you pick your attacks through the menu. There's obviously magic, because what would an RPG be without that? And while there are some elemental weaknesses, they don't factor in too much into what you'll be attacking. The biggest elemental buff I saw was that Undead enemies take extra damage from holy based weapons and attacks. I saw some fire enemies and used water on them, and my character's physical attack did more damage, so I don't really know if it's just that my magic was weak, or that the attack kinda doesn't matter. This is something I've read on the Steam forums, that the developer's kinda tweaking aspects of the game as it's still out there, so there might be some things I complain about that eventually get changed. But overall, the gameplay is just super basic. Where the interesting wrinkles come with Eve of Calamity is with its progression through the story. So there's some kind of plot about a beast known as the Beast of Calamity coming back and ruling the world. It kind of feels ripped from Chrono Trigger. But, you know, referencing the classics is never a bad thing. So... What I thought was intriguing the most is that there is a side plot between two different nations. I believe one is called Esterna, which is the main land that you'll be traveling through. And I, I can't really recall the second part because I didn't really care. I'm not one for side questing in games. So 
At one point, the king will ask you if you want to join his side on the Civil War. I mean, that sounds kind of neat. And he phrases it like, ooh, don't you want to keep the peace? Because he's a selfish asshole. <laughs> but um, I just didn't care. And I was like, no, I just kind of want to beat the game. I don't want to get involved in all this other crap. So I said no. But as it turns out, you don't need to actually do this. So there's different ways to accomplish your goal in Eve of Calamity. The main plot point that one of your characters will tell you about when you first meet them is that you need to travel to five different spires across the land and deactivate them so that when you go to the Beast of Calamity, he'll be weakened. You could just ignore that, though. As I found out, eventually at one point you can buy a boat and that'll allow you to travel the land instead of renting boats to get across places. And once you do that, you could just skip right to the final boss. So any of this Civil War nonsense or deactivating spires, that's mostly just there to help you make the end game less challenging. Now that sounds kind of silly when I lay it out like that, but it's a blueprint that was set forth by Breath of the Wild, um, what is it, seven years now? Breath of the Wild's best aspect, for any games in general, is that it showed that gamers want a way to engage the world on their terms. Well, obviously there's going to be some limitations because what is challenged without overcoming obstacles, it's nice to be able to direct the story how you want it to go. If you don't feel like engaging with all this nonsense about a civil war and some king trying to reclaim the land, like, I, you know, th that's not for me. And I have a feeling a lot of other people might not want to deal with that either. So you can just ignore it. And there's also the aspect with classes. So when you start the game, you could pick between, I believe it's five different classes. I want to say it's fighter, berserker, mage, cleric, and rogue. Don't quote me on that, but I do have a full live stream playthrough of the game, so you could just see in the video that I'm probably showing right now. <laughs> when you max one of those classes, you then unlock a prestige class, and that gives you more options for tailoring the play experience how you want it. Along the way, you also meet party members who you can recruit to your party, and they'll have their own specific classes and side quests that then unlock more prestige classes and so on and so forth. It's a cool way to at least mix up the general gameplay so that it's not just entirely basic, you know. This game might fashion itself after the original Final Fantasy, and I think some of that might be due to the limitations of being built on RPG Maker MV? Whatever the latest RPG Maker is. You know, it's cool that there are different nuances there, and that's what I appreciate about the design of Eve of Calamity. So the general gameplay, you know, whatever, it's an RPG, those aren't my thing, and at times I was just like, oh god, I want to be done, and I just started using physical attacks instead of trying to strategize. The game's not necessarily challenging. It could start off kind of hard, and as you'll see in my playthrough, I definitely died at points. It's not like the game is just a complete walk in the park. Overall, it's not too challenging, and once you have one character at the max level of 30, the rest of your party is pretty much going to coast off of them. So you could just swap in lower level characters if you want to level them up and so on. It's at least neat that when you change your class, it resets your stats. So it's not like you're just getting completely exponentially stronger every time you switch classes. But apart from that, I don't really know what else to say about Eve of Calamity. The art style initially drew me in because it is old school in style, but it's also very low budget. And, you know, I'm not going to fault an indie game for that. I don't think this was made by more than like five people. The art is definitely not the strong suit here. And I would say the same for the music as well. There are a couple of tunes that, you know, it's decent enough. They sound a little generic, but they get the job done. And then there are a few that are just like, what the hell? This sounds like some just like noodling around on an electric organ. I don't know. I can't put too much stock in that complaint, though, because when I look at it from my point of view, I wouldn't be able to do any of this anyway. And again, this is a very small project, so you have to expect some sort of limitations there. And Eva Calamity does do the best with what it has. Especially at the price of $13.99 on Steam, 
This is hardly a cardinal sin to have occasionally rough looking visuals and maybe harsh sounding music. Especially with the value proposition that Eva Calamity offers. For my playthrough, which was set to the highest combat speed and uh, fastest text speed, it took me a little over 11 hours to reach the credits. The developer says it'll take between 20 to 30 for most people, and in his own personal walk uh, playthrough, rather, had knowing where everything is and doing 100%, he can do it in about 17 hours. So there's definitely a replay value here in that you can choose where you want to go and how you want to do it. There's no set path between which spire you need to take first, uh, especially because you don't even need to take them. <laughs> One of the achievements does say that, too, to beat the Beast of Calamity without tackling any of the Spires. So I can see people that get invested in this game having a lot to dig into. And that is what I appreciate. Overall, I can't say that if you're like me and don't care for RPGs that you should buy it. This isn't something that's going to really change your mind about the genre. But if you're already a fan of similar games... Eva Calamity does offer some unique qualities that make it worth looking at. Whether or not you get it right now, or on a sale, or ever, you know, I'm not here to sell you on this product. I'm just someone that cares about games as an artistic medium, and smaller titles like this are the type of things that intrigue me more than big budget blockbusters. I hope you guys all enjoyed Raw Reviews, or at least the first episode of it. This isn't going to replace the traditional reviews that you've seen on Kill All Games, because I do like scripting out videos and having careful editing and all that, but for certain games, sometimes I don't have that much to say, but at least want to highlight what I played. Thank you guys for sticking with me this time, and you know, with the stupid YouTube jazz, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. <laughs> Until next time, peace.